this is a Belarusian web portal uh, to Dubai TV studio. I am your resistor. Usually I am an internet businessman. Now I am an organ music lover. Today in Minsk, we have a representative of a new generation of uh, French organists who graduated the Paris National Conservatory and the uh, professor of uh, Strasbourg Conservatory and organist of cathedral in Soissons. And the name of the organist and of our guest is Vincent Dubois. Hello, Vincent. Hello, Yurad. Thank you for your invitation here. I have some questions for you. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. This world is full of music, different music. We are literally surrounded by it. But this music is uh, different from the music you are playing. In the modern uh, world, uh, how important is a classic music in uh, general and organ music in particular? Well, what I can say uh, as a director of a conservatory is there are more and more young people interested in doing music, in learning an instrument of music, classical music. Um, I have to say that now, yeah, that's true that you have so much modern, like uh, rock and pop music, surrounded each other everywhere in the world. But it doesn't avoid that those young people who hear this music are also interested in some ways in the classical music. And I have noticed it's more and more, which could be a little strange what I am saying now, but it's what uh, I notice now. And uh, what, of course, is difficult is to, um, uh, to give this classical music uh, easily to anybody, because you need to, to do a lot of learning, like the theory, the uh, ear, ear training, uh, of course, instrumental exercise every day, and that's it. That's very hard to do for everybody. So that's why some people prefer doing pop or rock music because it's not that difficult to do and to produce a sound. But uh, coming back to the organ music, uh, what I also noticed is the reality. There are more and more organ classes in the conservatories in our countries, and there are more and more young people uh, going and being admitted in those organ classes. So that shows that the organ is not dying, it's still alive, and there are also organs which are restored, which are built in new concert halls or in churches. And it's not dead, it's really alive and lots of uh, concerts are also uh, a proof that the organ is alive because there are more and more organ concerts everywhere also. How much time do organists spend on duties related to musical accompaniment of church events? Do these activities leave musician, musicians enough time for creative work, for teaching, for giving concerts? Well, I think it depends on the position you have, because some church organists are doing their job in big churches, big parishes, where you have a lot of services to play, to accompany. So that doesn't allow them to spend a lot of time in their organ practice. But a lot of other organists are playing just one or two services in a week in their mm -hmm. church. And they 
have to organize choir rehearsals, but not that much. And then they can do a lot of concerts and a lot of practicing. So it really depends about the church where you are employed. How do you manage this issue? Uh, for me, well, mm -hmm. actually, uh, as far as I am French, in France we don't have this statute of church organist as England or US or Germany has. That means that when you are organist in a church or in a cathedral, it's sort of title. So you, you can play the organ whenever you want. You have to take care of the organ, about the maintenance mm -hmm. and the repairs inside. But it's not a duty to play every masses there. So that gives you a lot of time to do concerts and and practice, yeah. And this cannot be a job. It's just you play a mass, you are the titular of the organ, and that's it. And uh, you are an organist to titular uh, the Soisson, but Soisson is far from Strasbourg. Yeah, uh, I, uh, I am now away from Soisson uh, since last September. Mm -hmm. I was titular there during 12 years, but as you said, it's very far from where uh, I live in Strasbourg, which is almost 500 kilometers east from Soissons. So, uh, so now I don't have really a church as an organist titulaire, but uh, I know that in Soissons they want me to to be a sort of organist in residence there. So that means. Sometimes in a year, I will probably be back there, but uh, you know it, it will be uh, very irregular, not regularly. So I see. On sound, is it appropriate to perform uh, religions music in a philharmonic, and vice versa, secular music in a church? Yeah, for me this is not a problem at all because it's just music you play. You play music on organ because it's organ music. So the venue is not a problem. It could be a church, a concert hall. The, the most important thing is what you want people to hear, what you want to make them discover as a repertoire. So if you want to play some back chorals, in a, in, a, in a concert hall is not a problem at all. And if you want to play in a church a back sonata in trio, it's not a religious work, but that works very well anyway <laughs> mm -hmm. in the church, yeah. How did it happen that in the last uh, 200 years, the French organ music got ahead of the German and became uh, the best in the world. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if it's the best in the world, but it's one of the most well-known and famous uh, part of the organ music. Uh, that happened because, because the first was César Franck, and then after César Franck, in France, we keep a tradition with great musician. Uh, uh, doing their studies at the Paris Conservatory in composition classes. And those professors of composition were very good. And then they, they, they kept together with the students, which became, after that, great musicians. And then the thing was growing up this way. Great professor, then great student, then great professor, etc., etc. And also, I have to say that the organ building in France uh, make the things possible also because of those builders like Clicquot and then Cavalier Col, which was one of, of the greatest organ builders over the world. And then the composers were very inspired by those instruments. And because they have great abilities to compose and then great instrument to play the composition on it, 
that why that's why the French repertoire became one of the most famous. I think it's my opinion. Mm -hmm. And when did you personally fall in love with organ music, and what uh, influenced you as a musician most of all? Well, um, I was very attracted by the organ when I was seven or eight. Uh, each time when I, I went into a church somewhere, I was just fascinated by the instrument. And uh, I just said, I want to play that. <laughs> and my mother said, no, first you must play the piano and then the organ. Okay, I did that. But I love also the piano anyway. And uh, so that was the way I started organ because I was just really attracted by the sound and the, the impressive instrument that is it. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you agree that classical music is non democratic? Uh, it's not a secret that to understand it, uh, one needs to have uh, some sense or some ear for music and some sort of musical and spiritual experience. Well, that's a very large question. Uh, I have to say that music is like sport, is like painting, is like dance, is like everything which is not natural to do. The only thing which is natural to do is to live physically and to speak. Then what you will do next to that is not democratic. Because, for example, the mathematics or the biology is not something like everybody would do like this, naturally. You have to, to work on that if you want to make it well. The music is the same. But what is difficult in music, which, uh, I mean, the thing which can help the music to be more democratic is to learn music at school uh, as soon as possible when you are a child. To listen or to play? No, to, 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 to sing. To, to, for me, the, the singing is the, the, the most democratic way to do music because you don't need to buy an instrument and you can do that together and it's easy to do. But you have to learn how to read the music like you have to learn how to read Russian or Belarusian or French or English, the letters, the words, that's the same process. Uh, and then it's, it becomes very democrat that every kids can sing in a choir at school. Uh, Vincent, what's your opinion about electronic musical instruments, in particular electronic organs and uh, in general electronic instruments that have samples of organ music in their memory? What is the future of such instruments. Uh, can it be as with digital photography, when professional photographers first hated it, but la later liked it and started to use it widely? Well, for me, the, 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 the answer is like you have, you will have, I hope, for, for the most centuries, then you will have the acoustic instruments and the electronic instruments. For me, this is different. One cannot replace the other one. Uh, it's unbelievable to, to imagine a pianist doing a recital on the clavinova. He will play, obviously, a recital on a Steinway or a Bosendorfer. So why organist should play a recital on a uh, Johannes organ or uh, Rogers. Uh, I mean, it's possible, but for me, if you play the acoustic instrument, you should play the acoustic instrument in concert as well. I mean, it's not possible to change this sound because 
it's an acoustic sound, it's more deep, it's a deeper sound, it's a more natural sound as the strings, as the flute, as the wind instrument. We should keep this sort of artisana away and alive. Um, then, for me, the electronic organs can be very helpful for people who don't have a pipe organ at home, of course, because then you can practice on an organ with uh, keys and a pedal board and it doesn't take a big place. But if you can have a little pipe organ at home, it's even better, I think, for myself. But the big difference, speaking about organ, is if you have a pipe organ, mechanical, you can control the sound, and it's very important for the touch, and, for the, and to make the music alive. Because on an electronic touch, you cannot have this music so alive, because it's more flat. You cannot control. So that's why it will be impossible for me to, to say we will replace the acoustic organ by the electronic organs because of the sound, of the mechanic, and of the dynamic of the instrument. What do you think about playing music in authentic manner? Does it make sense to play music as it was played many years ago or centuries ago <laughs> uh, as a low tune and so on? Or we understand uh, musicians and uh, their work better if we play them in modern man manner? Um, this is... Uh also a very large question. Uh, my opinion is, we don't know how people played some centuries ago. We don't have recordings of them. And even if we have recording of them, maybe we, we could say, well, that's not the way it should play. You, you don't know, finally. So the only thing for me which is the most important is to analyze the the language and the music paper of the composers, what they wrote on the paper. You have to understand the pieces that you play, to analyze the pieces, and then to make it exactly as the composer wants. So, which is evident. I mean, when a composer wants attention at this point, you you can analyze this tension because he used this process and process in composition, and then that's the way it is built. Then you have to interpret this composition as the composer has wanted when you wrote it. Uh, then you are, uh, to, to make the summary of that, you just have to be... Uh, convincing, but not authentic. The authenticity, we don't know what it is. If you want really to be authentic, because some people want to be sort of musicologist playing organ, then you have to play, for example, back pieces without a motor on the organ and without lights, electric lights, but candles, and ask someone to to pump behind, you know, if, if we want to go further in, in this ID, that's at some point a little ridiculous. The only thing is to make the music that you, you feel it's what the composer wants and express the music with your soul, of course, but with, in respecting what the composer wants. Thank you very much, Vansan. We had here in the studio of Belarusian portal to Dubai TV. Uh, this was uh, Vansan Dubois, director of conservatory in Strasbourg. And uh, I am Yuri Zisser from Dubai, an organ music lover. 
uh, one son uh, have a good time in Minsk and uh, have a good music. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ira, and keep going this way to be so patient with organ music and the music world and the organ world, sorry. And it's a pleasure for me to be there with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>